Today, four more Massachusetts residents will die of overdoses, opioid overdoses. Over 80% of people that end up with a needle in their arm with heroin start with legally prescribed opioids. And there's only two things that happen with addiction, especially opioid addiction. Treatment, ongoing treatment, or death. And more people will die this year from opioid overdoses than car accidents. The word that I have um, the trouble getting out is hopelessness. Um, these kids don't have any hope. They're trapped. They're trapped by their addictions. Those studies that look at adverse early childhood experiences and long-term mental and physical health one of the adverse childhood experiences that is clearly, clearly associated with a poor outcome uh, is having a parent or guardian with a significant substance problem. So working with organizations like the Cambridge Health Alliance is a step in the right direction and sometimes through that step you can enter a space where you can find hope for these kids. Stigma is, um, I think it really hinders a lot of people from getting help, from saying that they even have an addiction. In 2014, the last year we passed a gun bill, um, I got to know a chief of police from Gloucester, where I spent a lot of time, and um, he was very helpful in our uh, getting our gun bill passed. And I had said to him, if there's anything you ever need, let me know. And then uh, last spring, he announced uh, that starting on June 1st, uh, anyone with the disease of addiction um, could come into the Gloucester Police Department, uh, not be shamed, not be judged, and be helped into treatment, not jail. And he took this very bold stance for a police chief to say, this is a disease, not a crime. Uh, it needs treatment, not jail. Uh, and in the absence of, uh, of treatment, um, of ways into treatment, um, he was going to provide that through the Gloucester Police Department. So since June 1st, 2015, over 400 people have come into the Gloucester Police Department and all are in treatment. Uh, over 100 police departments across the country have partnered with us. Over 200 treatment centers have partnered with us, providing beds for treatment with or without insurance, scholarships if people didn't have the right kind of insurance. Um, and we have another 100 police departments lining up. Um, we've worked with Governor Baker and, uh, and passed comprehensive opioid addiction and treatment legislation um, and we're working with the US Congress because frankly whether you're from whether you're Mitch McConnell from Lexington Kentucky or Ed Markey from Lexington Mass your constituents have the same problems this disease knows no boundaries The most important thing for me is humility and being willing to surrender and practicing that in my life. I have to remain open-minded and, and, and listen to what different people are saying. And those are some of the things that I've heard over the years that I just, I always fought them. I always thought I could trust my own thinking and you know I knew what was best. And that doesn't, that doesn't mean I'm not intellectually competent to make decisions in life. It just means that I don't have all the answers. And I had to arrive at a place where you know, I was willing to take some advice from other people. And from being around 12-step recovery for years and years and years and constantly hearing them say, you have to do all this stuff, I would go to these meetings and hear them say all that, you know, and then I would say, well, I'll do this, this, and this, and that will work for me because I'm different than everyone else. 
and I'll figure out the rest. And I would go back and I would use. And so through trial and error, I finally said, you know what, I gotta, I gotta just try this. I gotta listen to what they're saying. But it wasn't just a 12-step program either. It was going into therapy. That's why you know, I mentioned that, because I, I knew I needed to sort through some of that stuff. The loss of my father, active addiction in the home, you know, multiple losses of friends and family members throughout the years that I never even processed. So for me, recovery is, um, I've changed a lot. I've changed my behaviors. I don't use drugs or alcohol in any form. Um, so, you know, there are some people who are on the harm reduction side. I'm completely abstinent from all drugs and alcohol. And it wasn't until somebody said to me that exactly what you said, you don't look like a, you don't look like a drug addict. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm not a drug addict. I am a mother. I am, you know, employable. I, I started feeling like this is not, this doesn't have to be my whole this life. This isn't me. This isn't yes, me, right. you know? And um, I, it was like a, a spiritual awakening. And it was like a revelation. It, it was, know, right? it was, because I had kind of resigned, like, I'm just always going to be this. I'm always going to be an addict. I'm always going to just be, it's going to just get worse. And it didn't have to be, and I started waking up. and. You know, I just haven't stopped since. We need programs that uh, can have the sustainability to really work long term and um, have patients meeting with outpatient recovery coaches and uh, therapists and counselors on a twice, three time weekly basis uh, for weeks, months, years as needed. It keeps you in recovery. Um, what would you tell her? You my children. Your my children. children. Simple Keep answer. Me. Yeah, my How children. How many do you have? I have three children. Oh, lucky, lucky kids. Yeah, they're lucky, they're yeah. awesome. They they keep me on my toes. They're <laughs> my daughter's eleven. I have a son who's nine, and then I have a, a seven year old. So and you have your hands full. <laughs> I do. I do. But um, I came into recovery for myself. But they have really, and my mother too. They are my inspiration. They're why I work hard. They're why I want to go back to school and why I stay in recovery. We need to stop the shaming. We need to address this crisis, this epidemic, as what it is. It's a chronic disease with no cure that needs to be treated long term. And once we do that, we'll get a handle on the 47,000 overdose deaths a year.